Oh, well, hi there. Welcome to the Unimaginative Talk comic blog. Just taking a few minutes out, and I'll try and keep this video short. It's tricky because I'm going to touch on some some strange stuff. Uh, this video is going to be very experimental, and we're going to talk about some theories that might be a bit out there. So, um, can I get a woo woo alarm, please? <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Ten years ago, I was at an animation convention, and the guest note speaker was a guy called Barry Purvis, who was an excellent stop motion animator. Well, Barry had this idea, he had this theory he wanted to expand on, and it's based on uh, the social contract, a philosophical sort of argument by a French philosopher called Rousseau. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Jets. Come back, come back. It's fine. You, you, trust me. So Rousseau sort of had this concept of the social contract, which, as I understand it, is a set of unwritten rules that everyone somehow always agrees on in a society, more or less. And so Barry was sort of postulating that maybe there is a social contract that exists between performer and audience. And he sort of dressed it up a little bit. He said, essentially, there's two there's two aspects to it. The first aspect is suspension of disbelief, and that actually counts for a great deal. Okay, so imagine you go to a stage show and you're watching a magician, and he's pulling rabbits out of hats and doors out of thin air, and he's got his assistant in the box and he's sawing them in half. Right, you don't reach for your phone and dial nine 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 because you know he's not sawing them in half. You know it's a trick, but you also know that you don't know how it's done, and so the result is somewhat inexplicable, almost magical. And so you don't worry that the woman's in danger. You know that he's cutting her in half, and they're going to move the box apart, and her legs are going to flick, and her eyes are going to. She's going to move her arms around for a couple of holes, you know. And he's going to put it back together, pull the plates out, and open the case, and she's going to step out. And you're going to go, amazing, amazing. And that's the second part of the contract. I perform something. You acknowledge that you've received it by tapping. And if you like it, yeah! You know, you're going to be really enthusiastic. And if you just watch through, through, through if you just sat through two hours of absolute turgid nonsense, And so I think I think that's how that contract can work. Or well, that's his example. Uh, I wonder if there's a similar framework that can exist between comic book readers and comic book creators. And I think there is. And I think the whole thing hinges on suspension of disbelief and sort of the maintain maintenance of character. Uh, in terms of writing, and this is this is kind of boring. If you're a writer and you're given a character that's been around for eighty years, so like, oh, I gotta write Superman's a goody goody. Mm. Yeah, kinda, but that's Superman. It wouldn't be Superman if you did that. If you if you changed it, so when writers start talking about subverting expectations, it's time to get a bit leery. Um, there's a risk that you could alienate the audiences. There's a risk that the, essentially the contract between the reader and the and the artist is 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 broken, because the readers turned up and say, "I want to read the story of Superman's story." He's going to fly. He's going to capture a bad guy. He's going to take him to a police officer, and then fly off. He's not going to do what Batman does, which is beat him up in an alley, hang him over a building, get some information about who's the big crime kingpin leave them tied up in an alley with a note and then go off into the night. That's what Batman does. Superman does what Superman does. Batman does what Batman does. The second you make Superman into Batman, he's no longer Superman. He's Batman. And even, even if you make Batman worse, as soon as you start doing things that Batman wouldn't do, he's no longer Batman. Yeah? 
The second you have Batman shooting and killing people, and they did that in, um, what would it be? Dawn of Justice, right? And branding people with the Batarangs. Uh, that's not stuff Batman does. It's not stuff that he's known for. And we've got lots of films, you know? There's what, two, there's what, two Burton films? Three Schumacher films? There's, there's five before Nolan got his hands on No, there was four films before Nolan got his hands on him. Another three then. There's seven, fil seven or eight films, right? Show up with Batman not doing that, right? Snyder takes over the role, and suddenly he's branding people, he's doing all this crazy stuff. Um, that's not Batman. And in the same way, he had Superman acting cold and aloof, and that's not Superman. So, at this point, the audience are going, the contract's kind of broken here, guys. I came to watch a Superman film, and you're giving me basically Batman. And people are going, I came here to see Batman, and essentially you're giving me the Punisher. <laughs> um, can and, and oh, oh yeah, authors will sort of say, well, yeah, but we want to subvert expectations. And yes, yes, you do. But you have to do it within a framework. And can it be done? Yes, it can. Uh, there is a great example in Superman 3 where Superman is poisoned by Gus Gorman's sort of fake kryptonite. And it subverts the character just enough that people realise he's, he's no longer Superman. He's not doing the things Superman does. And that everyone sort of starts to hate him. He becomes a jerk. He straightens the leaning tower of Pisa. He doesn't help people. And he drinks in the bar and shoots a little, I think, the peanuts into the bottles and makes them explode. And then he has a fight with himself, and then returns as Superman. Um, I think that works. That works particularly well in that film. I don't. I can't remember what the rest of the film is like. I think it's actually the rest of the film probably sucks. But that particular sequence, great. So, is there a contract between the comics creator and the audience? Are the expectations that you have as a as a, a reader picking up a book? Are there things that you're not necessarily expecting to see, but other things you're not expecting the character to do? So, for example, if the Hulk is based on rage, suddenly he's no longer rampaging minus beast. He's now, I don't know. Um, just a guy who paints people's houses. Yeah. Um, does that break the contract? Does that does that stop being the Hulk then? I'd be interested to hear what you think. Um, comments and questions down below, as per usual. Um, okay, we've had two fairly highbrow uh, episodes of this vlog recently. Next week or next video, we'll do something simple. We'll do something fun. We'll do some colouring. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. Good. Great. Okay. Right. Uh, I guess I'm going to shoot off. Right. See you later. Bye. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're still subscribed and lock the bell for notifications. Okay. Bye bye now.